G'day guys, welcome back. So today is going to be day number one of hashtag 28 days of Colin Thompson. So, Shell, Ashley and myself, I think have decided to do, I don't know, some level of crazy. And we are going to be doing a color along for the entire month of February in the, um, with a Colin Thompson drawing. Now, illustration. So. I am using it, and I think we all are, or might be, going from the Colouring Heaven Busy World Special. And the page that we will be doing is page number 19, which is Red Box. So this is, if you want to join us in this colour along, this is the page that we will be colouring. Now, the way that we're tackling this is we have a list of well a we have divided this into 28 sections and we'll be doing a section each day i will be working with the cray art um, oil-based pencils now the cray art are the budget version of the marketed oil-based pencils ashley i believe is working with shafia farbens which is the mid-range and Shell will be working with Polychromos, which is the top of the oil-based range of pencils. So that is what we're going to be doing. Um, so each day we'll be coming in and doing that. As we go through, I'll be showing you what I'm doing and um, probably just talking random, whatever comes into my head, conversation, because 28 days of filming, I'm gonna need something to talk about. So if um, you have questions that you want to ask me or you want to hear my, I don't know, opinions or thoughts on certain topics or whatever it may be, as long as they are appropriate for the channel, then um, please leave a comment down below and um, ask away and it might give me something to talk about in the upcoming videos. But that is what we are going to be doing. So I'm going to get in and get started. The first one we're going to be doing is this one up in this section here, which is the pots and pans. So let's get into it. Okay, so let's get started. I'm going to go in first with sky blue and I'm going to go in and layer just a base layer down here on these So yeah, so this is um definitely going to be a big challenge for this month. Um, it's definitely something outside the comfort zone that I have done trying to do and meet with all of these challenges. I'm going to go in with sapphire. So um, not only completing a detailed page, but uploading a video every day for the month of February um, is a big commitment and <laughs> I kind of feel for Shelley at this that she's backing up from doing her um, uh, back you background you wary I can, can't say pronounce it properly but she's did a background um, every day in January different background and now she's going to follow it up with this um, I think she's even more insane than me, um, which is saying something because I'm a little bit crazy. All right, so that was with Sapphire. And now I'm going to go in with Egyptian blue. So going in with Egyptian blue, just along these edges here. Create a bit of depth to the bowls. Going to go back with sapphire over that Egyptian blue where I laid it down before, pulling it out slightly. And then lastly in with sky blue. 
going over all of what I've done and then bringing it in towards this center area. So you notice I've just left this little section here white. I'm going to come in in a second and pull the blue into that using the white pencil. So I'm going to come in and just start pulling that in just to create highlights to those folds. Alrighty, so there we go. Now I'm kind of excited that Shell chose this image for us to do because it is Japanese based. Okay, so there's more Asian based. There's a lot of Japanese influence in this, um, which is nice because um, if you weren't aware, I um, teach junior Japanese. I'm not um, fluent in any way, shape, or form with Japanese, but. to be able to do something that is in, in is in an area that I enjoy my like my decor in my house is very Asian inspired so I'm really enjoying this okay I've got apple green here so I'm just going to go in and layer a little bit over this tree or it could be broccoli might even be broccoli who knows but we're going to put it there it's a as I've been getting ready to do this and I've been looking at Colin's work, it's, um, he's got, there's, it's, it's interesting. It reminds me a lot, you know, when you look at Kirby and all of those kinds of things, all of these little things that you find within the picture as you start. Okay, I'm going in with moss. And I'm just going to start adding a little bit of shadow. except for I need to sharpen it a bit and I broke the pencil okay all right hunter green it only broke because of the way I was holding it okay so going in and I'm just going to put some of that down at the base of this tree all right, going to go back in with some apple green and just bring it all together. There we go. Alrighty. Let's go with the next set, Kishon, which is going to be the tree trunk. So, what are we going to do there? What colours can I choose? Let's go for... All right, so let's bring in a little bit of clay. Ooh, the clay in there. And a little bit of dark umber. Right, how is that looking? All right, okay. Now, let's do what is behind it. Um, let's make that a leathery look. So I'm going to go in with ochre. Got some dark ochre mixed. Okay. Let's go light. Okay, going to sharpen it. I should have sharpened all my pencils to points before I started. It's going to need points for this book. All right, so light ochre. Okay. A 
light layer of that down. Then we're going to go in with rust. Get that quick sharpen. And try not to break it. I've got rust here, so I'm going in with rust. Oh, and I've broken my pencil. Okay, let's see what I can do. I think I might need to replace the blade on my sharpener. We'll see what happens. Okay. Okay. Going in with rust. dark umber again. Just run it along the edges. There goes one tip. All right, you need to keep count between me and Shell how many tips we break. Add it up at the end. Okay, there we go. All right. Let's go in and do this ladle. Um, I think we might go for ladle. I think I might go for a silver. Ice grey. Yeah, definitely need to replace the blade on my sharpener, I think. Okay, so ice grey. So this one is ice grey. Going in. Same thing. Now, Colin's work is very, is grayscaled, very grayscaled. So, um, you know, letting that grayscale help guide where you're laying down the colour is going to help a lot um, when you are thinking about tackling a project such as this. So I've got ice grey down. Now I'm going to go in with a dark grey. Going in with dark grey. black going in with some dark gray along here coming in with the white I'm going to come in with a gel pen, white gel pen, and I'm just going to put a little reflection mark in there. Okay, let's have a look at our little colour. Ballet slippers. So, a little bit of a pinky tone. the straw area. Going in with a little bit of yellow 
Joy Green. Fine tip there. Yellow green. Oh, there goes tip. There's another one. Going into there. And just add a little bit of depth to the little creature I've got here. There we go. Alright. Okay, for something so little, it's going to take a bit of time. Okay, let's do this cast iron pot here. dark grey. Actually no, I'm going to go in with cool grey first. So I'm going to go in with cool grey and start to put a little bit of colour down on this. I'm going to leave the rim up here uncoloured for the moment. <clears throat> kind of think how many of our pots and pan cupboards end up looking like this I know because I get my girls to put the dishes away they never quite put the dishes away in the um, order that I like them put away in so every now and again I have to go back and reorganize my um, pot cupboard dark gray so um, I always have to go back in and rearrange it. So I like my I like my drawers and my cupboards organised, but you know life happens and it doesn't stay perfectly organised. And it's more important um, for the girls to be, um, you know, contributing to you know, household chores and things like that than me having perfectly organised cupboards. So I'm just going to start putting a little bit of a shadow underneath my little mouse here as well. It's dark grey. Now I'm going to go in with some black. It's always a way, you know, you sit there and you like put it all back together and then sometimes it's annoying sitting there trying to get to the pot at the back and then everything's got to come out of the cupboard and uh, so frustrating. Um, and I have my, and as I'm sure you guys do, I have my favourite pots and pans. Like I have lots of pots and pans, but I have my favourite ones that I like to use for different things. I don't know, it might just be me. Um, but I do have my favourite pots and pans that I get into. All right, what have I got? Cold grey. Okay, just going to go in with cold grey now and work over work over some of this. Just where I put that black down. Coming in under here. Now. I'm going to come in with the white and just put a little section here in the middle and run it along the edges. I'm not going to use um, gel pen here because it is cast iron, it's not meant to be shiny. I just want to give the appearance of depth. So I'm going to go back in with the black just to help that and just really bring in those edges and the shadowing. Okay, 
So who believes it's February already? Oh my gosh. I'm like, I'm sure it, I don't know where the year is going. Um, it's, it's certainly moving fast. All right. I'm going to move up into the, the handle now, which will be cast iron as well. So I'm going to put a real dark just to kind of outline it. I'm going to go in with dark grey. Bring that in from the black. And a little bit of the cool grey. Coming back in with black and just really bringing that up. All right, the handle. Let's go in for a bit of a wood look. going to start around here Carob. Hopefully as I go through this and I get a little bit more comfortable with the size of that I'm working with, I'm, I, I feel like I should be talking more, but it's really hard to kind of concentrate as I'm working through this. It's, it's much more difficult than I thought it would be because it's very, very tiny and I'm trying to um, basically pay attention to what I'm doing so I don't end up with it all over the page. And nothing about me is delicate. So this is very hard to kind of get in and get done. But I, I am, and I, I'm, I'm really pleased for the challenge because this is definitely pushing me outside my comfort zone. Before I start the next, do the next video, I need to change the blade on my sharpener. It's basically what is happening. Otherwise, I'm going to chew my crayouts to pieces. Okay. So I'm going to use silver. So this is a metallic, crayout metallic, and I'm just going to run the silver along these edgings. covered. I'm going to go in with dark brown. Dark brown right along this is handle. Yeah. Okay. Now I'm going to go in with Orca. And I'm going to do this one here. I'm just going to run it along. This and tie it all. Okay. 
All right, there is a pot. Okay, let's go in with our little mace. I'm gonna go in with ice gray for our little mace. So a little few cutie failers here. Little uh, mace. And then we might go in and let's see if I can find a, what colour can I use for the ears? Let's go in with coral red. And let's see if I can put a little bit of colour in just for their little ears. in with a little bit of dark grey. Need to put a tip on it. I think that's going to be the thing through all of this is trying to keep a little fine tip and me that um that um what am I saying? Me that breaks tips like crazy it's just going to be snapping tips like that all the way through. I'm just going to put in a little bit of shape to our little ratties here. Well, mice. I'm going to say rats because I have rats, but I think they're meant to be mice. So a little, little one there. Okay, let's go in for with ochre for my spoon here. Come in with a little bit of brown. Just a little bit of shadow to the spoon. And a little bit of white. All right, there we go. It's gonna be interesting to see. I, I am looking forward to seeing what the other ladies do. I'm gonna go use brown while I have it here and I'm just gonna run it along here. Okay. There's a shelf. Um, there we go. I've got to remember too that it's going to be, while well, I want to colour this in and, and make it as good as possible, it is very, very tiny. And that is going to require a great deal of effort to be able to work with that. All right, I'm going to go in with this one. Tangerine. Okay, so I'm going to lay tangerine down on this one here. Stinking is going to be my base colour for this large pot. Sharpen that to a point. So you see, I'm working in little tiny circular motions whilst I'm doing this just to slowly layer up the colour. I find if I work in circular motions, I'm less heavy handed. Um, it's just something I've discovered about myself. So when I'm wanting to build up light layers, I work in circular motions and it kind of stops me from um, pressing too hard. Okay, so that was yam. Now I'm going to go in with amber. All I'm trying to do here is work with the, the guide that the grayscale has given me um, about laying down, I guess, the different degrees of colour as I am doing this pot. Okay, this is the hard part because I can't turn the page because then you'll disappear out of frame. 
is me trying to bend myself into a position so that I can get into areas, so get into the nooks and crannies. Now, I know I would be concerned if I had mice and a panda and a vulture in my cupboard. Be kind of like the windows to Narnia, I think. Okay, I'm going to go back in with Yam and start bringing that out over where I've put that um, amber down as well. Just slowly working the colours in together. Oh. So I'm back at work, um, which is exhausting. Um, the holidays were lovely. It was so nice to just relax and enjoy myself doing whatever I wanted, but um, it's definitely feeling it now. My brain's not coping with actually having to think again um, and being responsible and you know, all of that kind of thought process required to teach and impart infinite words of wisdom onto the next generation. So I'm going to take that tangerine and I'm just going to lightly run it across this top rim now that I've got the shadow line down. Okay, and I'm just going to come in with that amber again and gently run it.
Okay, so we're back. We've gone through and colored the majority of the pots. Like I said, the um, colors that I've used for each of these pots and things will be listed down below. And we're gonna go back in and just finish off these little details so that um, this section is done. And then we're done for the first one, woohoo. Okay, so I'm going to go in with the silver and I'm just going to run that along here. Along here and these handles. So I'm just putting the silver down as my base layer and I'll come back in with black and start to use that to define it a little bit better. So just to define those edges. a little bit of shading into it okay and I'm gonna go in and do the sprues get a bit of black and a little bit of silver over again just to meld it all together. And a little bit of white. Just give it a little bit of reflection. I'll do a little bit up here too. Alright, so a little bit of that. Make it a little bit. And on here. It's a bit hard. My signos kind of has its moments where it wants to work and it doesn't want to work, but that's what nails are for. Um, I'm just going to scrape that off. If you ever put a bit of gel pen down that you're not sure you like, just wait for it to dry a little bit and you can just scratch it straight off with your fingernails, which makes it kind of good. So I'm just going to try and go in with the white pencil there just to, well, it won't do much. Okay. All right. I'm going to go in behind here and I think I might do that in. Let's have a look. Have a look around. I've got red, red, red. Blue, 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 green. Might do that in green. Uh, so I'm going to go in with moss. A little bit there. And I'll just darken up a little bit of the edge and the shadows with forest green. Okay, so that's that done. Okay, so then I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna use this as like a oil drip or a honey drip. Either one will work. So I'm gonna go in with lemon first. Put down a base of lemon. And right, next one is going to be yellow. Some yellow coming down there. Yellow. And then I might go for a little bit of mm, mahogany. that in there and I might come in with a little bit of dark yellow just to mix that mahogany in with the yellow that we put down. 
So just softening the blend there. And I think it needs a little bit of a darker shade through the base of it. So I might come in with, uh, let's go dark umber. I'm just gonna run that right along that edge there. Okay, that looks a little bit better there. And then I'm gonna go come back in with the yellow. Just bringing it up and over. I'm gonna take that dark yellow up into the drip. And then in with Lemon. Okay. I'm going to come in with the white. Just blend that together. So there we go. We've got our little oil drip. Okay, We've got our little mouse here. I'm just going to come in with. He's not really going to stick out, but I'm going to just touch him with a little bit of ice gray. There we go. Just make sure he's got some colour on him. All right, let's do these wooden handles up here, wooden spoons. I think I'm going to use ochre. All right, it's coming in. And some ochre for my handles and I might run a little bit of what am I going to run a little bit of um, let's run a little bit of because it's out dark umber just to give it some kind of Movement. There we go. There we go. We've got our handles. All right. So let's have a look. We've got our little eyes down there. He's fine. Our panda. He's fine. Okay. Our vulture. Okay. All right. So I'm going to start with the. Yeah. Let's go dark umber. That's what I picked up. It'll do. Starting up with dark umber. Bring it on up. It took me ages to figure out what this thing was. I was like, what is that thing? And I'm like looking at underneath magnifying glass and I'm looking this way and that way. And then I was like, oh, I think I've worked out. So in my head, it's a vulture. If it's not too bad, so sad, that's what it is. All right, coming in with black, I'm just gonna deepen up down here. Yeah. I'm gonna go out, outline him a little bit so he's popping out. All right, let's get a pink. Okay, let's go for Semon. Alright, right. I'm going to put a little bit more of a point on there. There you go, Step. That's the payoff. Yeah, I put a point on, but I'm gonna break a tip. But sometimes I need just that finer edge. All right, so we've got the pink there. And then we'll come in with yellow for his beak. There we go, there's our little vulture dude. Done. All right, plant. I want it to kind of stick out against grey, so I'm going to go in with lime green. You know, for most fresh young shoots are really bright. So let's go in with lime green. And a little bit of... Hmm. 
then that put a bit of dirt down so let's come in with ochre and a little bit of dark umber And just got our dude in a boat. Okay. Having a bath. All right. So let's go in with um, Maya blue. Doesn't really matter what blue you use. Let's put a little bit of blue down there. Um. Thing. Oh, what colour am I going to use? I might use creamsicle. So I'm going to creamsicle. Can I run against it? Because it's out, I'm going to use a bit of ochre. Right, and let's go in with dark yellow for his hat. A little bit of dark umber. Just to define it, add a little bit of texture. And there we go. I think we are done with section number one. Woohoo! All right, so the first one of 28 is done. Looks a little bit cute. Um, <laughs> I'm like, Honestly, sometimes when I look at these illustrators, I just, their minds would be such wicked places to visit. Um, it's awesome. Okay, so we've got that and we'll be moving on to day number two. So I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.